It's amazing what we can do when we focus on facts. Facts help us cool down like nothing else. One of the greatest facts you can ever focus on is the fact that absolutely nothing is taking place in this world. The same way that nothing is really taking place in dreams. Dreams do not really affect our, our waking condition and existence does not affect reality at all. Some would say we were to take a break from existence and then come back after a while. And what has happened in our absence? Nothing. Because there's nothing taking place in existence at all. Why? Because existence is simply the attempt to distract us from what we are. Distract us from our true identity. Distract us from our true home. It's a distraction device. So what does a distraction device actually accomplish? Everything that's accomplishing is only temporary. And it really has no meaning, no ultimate meaning whatsoever. Because eventually we'll get tired of this and gain and remember what we are. So if we take a break from this world, cool down, come back to the world, we say, ah, same old world, same simply a simple distraction from what we are, a forgetfulness of what we are. That's all that it is. It's not changing what we are. It's not modifying what we are. It's not changing reality at all. It's not changing facts. It's not changing truth. It does nothing whatsoever to truth, to reality, to facts, to what we are, our identity, our experiencing. Zero impact, zero consequence. And it's a very, a very calming thing to realize this, that we're not missing anything. At no point in time are we ever missing anything. We're not missing out on anything. Because nothing's happening here. We don't have to frantically run about saying, I don't dare miss this, I don't dare miss that. Nothing has ever happened here. Not only is there nothing happening now, but nothing has ever happened here. How about that? So, it doesn't matter that we weren't here in the past or won't be here in the future. Nothing, is going to, nothing happened in the past, and nothing is going to happen in the future. So, where are we going, really? Do we need to go anywhere? Or is it okay that we're right here, right now? Another great cool down truth is that unconditional love does not keep any data, does not record any data at all. It's data free. Imagine a situation where no one is asking your identity for identity papers. No, no one is asking who you are. No one is asking what are you doing here. No one is asking how long are you going to be here? When are you going to leave? No one is asking what is your purpose here? No one is questioning your credentials to be here. No one is asking you what have you learned by being here? No questions, no judgments, and no one is collecting data when you arrived and when you left, how long you were here, how many times you've come here, etc. Data free, judgment free. If we could just simply grasp this a little bit, we would think about oh, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. Are you kidding me? Is it possible that there's this unconditional love that simply is? I think it would bring us to tears because we are so shaken up by the world and it's voracious demands of us and we're so tired of that because I'll tell you this what we are has no demands on it except that it be what it is which isn't a demand which is effortless but what we have done is we've tried to be something different than what we are we've tried to become change what we are 
And so this effort to change what we are feels like this enormous demand on us. And we, we rarely are aware of, of, of this demand that we're demanding of, this, of ourselves. But we actually are. That is a fact. We're actually demanding that we change what we are. We're actually demanding that we become something different than what we are. Therefore, we feel under this enormous pressure, and we have this massive bureaucracy surrounding ourselves with, with all these rules and regulations and laws, and unwritten laws, unspoken laws, expectations, pressures, demands of all types, and uh, revisionist thinking, constantly revising, looking at the past and saying, oh, saying how terrible we were because we didn't do this, and we need to, in the future, make sure that we do better, but knowing that whatever we do in the future will eventually be looked upon in the, in, the, in the farther future as being something terrible and awful. You just can't win. You cannot win. It's a no-win situation we're in. And that pressure is so severe for us that we're feeling it right now. We're feeling probably more than ever have in this planet. We're in a no-win situation. And the wise move is to cool down. Which is why it's cool now places here. To, to listen to facts, to hear facts, that will cool you down. Nothing else will cool you down like that. There's no drug that will do that. There's no sensory experience that will do that. Truth and facts are heard by our inner truth, by our true self, by what we really are. There's a remembrance taking place there. After all our attempts to modify what we are, we still remain exactly the same, only we have this vast overlay of memory and responses and data that we've collected. And uh, we believe that what we are has been obscured, but we're in a kind of a state of forgetfulness of what we are. Very deep state of forgetfulness. Even though it's temporary, right now it's very deep, and we're feeling it. We're feeling we're in a no-win situation. Everyone's feeling that right now. No matter what side of anything one is on, if you just feel it's like, you know what, I don't quite see that, you know, we're really going to win. <laughs> There's no winning anymore, is there here? The future, look at the future. It looks like nobody's going to really win. And of course, existence itself never wins. Existence is a no win situation. So imagine a situation that is not trying to come up with winners. Because it doesn't have to. Because unconditional love is only reminding us of what we already are. We don't need to win a place in, in reality. We don't need to win an identity. Possible to lose. Where's the winning? It's not really a winning, is it? Again, imagine an experience which is not trying to determine a winner. It doesn't need to. The way to cool down is to inquire about unconditional love. Ramon Maharshi said the way is to inquire about the self. Okay, I'm putting a little different spin on it. I say, Inquire into unconditional love, the experiencing or the responding to it. Because the relief is there, the cool down is there. That is where it is actually found. And in no other place are you going to find the cool down that you're looking for. Most people take a cool down as a, a relaxing a little bit, recharging their batteries so that they can go out and try to win. Again, make 
like renewed efforts to win. But as I we've seen in the world right now, we're starting to realize, hey, it's dawning on us, you know. I'm driving today and I said, realize, you know what? I, I don't see any winners here at all. Nobody's going to win. There's no winning strategy in this world. And that, of course, uh, is leading people to agitation because they're thinking, well, how do I win? You know, I've got to try harder. I've got to be more angry. I've got to be more motivated. I've got to demonize the opponent more. I have to find ways to defeat the opponent more severe ways. And everything is just doubling down in the world. The world is in a double down situation. Everyone has to double down, and, and everyone believes that whoever double, that double down is the best. Stonewall doubled, find ultimate strength in ultimate weakness. You know, just the ego believes that strength comes from weakness, and that the weaker the position, the stronger one gets. Because the, you know, the, the, the stronger the lies and delusion, the stronger the position, even though lies and delusion are weakness, because they're vulnerable to truth. The more one invests in lies, the more vulnerable the position is. The ego sees it as the more vulnerable one is, the stronger one is. As if we're getting closer to overcoming truth. It's very much upside down. So the only direction the world will give now is doubling down, doubling down, doubling down. Trying to win. Trying to win. Win what? Nobody's very sure about that at all. All it does is win some more delay in forgetfulness of what one really is. And that's not really a win at all. That's, another, that's just continued loss of happiness. It's not loss. It's simply uh, unaware, unaware of happiness, unaware of what we are. Denial of it, forgetfulness of it. So there is no winning in the world at all. And I, I'm sure that many are feeling this. This is the feeling of the times. We're in a no-win situation. I look at the future and say, there's no way to win. There is no winning. I'm only going to lose, for sure. I'm going to lose. Because even if I, the only way to pretend to be gaining is to double down on, de on delusion. And, and of course, we don't want to do that. Because then the, the, the losing will appear to be really severe. So we don't want to double down on deception. So and there's no win situation. So what do we do? Turn to inquiry into unconditional love. Because unconditional love is the win. It's the win for everyone. It's the sure bet. It's not even a bet. It's a sure thing. There's no way anyone who is responding to unconditional love can fail to remember their true identity. And it's a certainty that unconditional love remains as it is always. So everyone will eventually respond to unconditional love and remember what one is. Everyone's a winner. Everyone will remember their true identity. That it's not in dispute. That it's not uh, anything that is a doubt whatsoever. So, it's a perfect winning situation. We're in a perfect winning situation right now. If we turn to unconditional love, it's just as easy as uh, going like that, shifting, and there it is. <laughs> All right. Very great. Uh, Inquiry into unconditional love. Inquiry into unconditional love is the way to cool down. Is what we're doing. Is what we're doing. I've been doing this over at the Christ Clarity Channel quite a bit. And uh, it needs to be done in, in, a, in a greater way right now. So I'm presenting this on the, on the Cool Down Channel. Inquiry into unconditional love. Just hear that. that. That's the mantra. Okay, I'd like to present a mantra to the world, which means to you. And tell yourself the way to win is inquiry into unconditional love. Because as you win, everyone wins. As you discover the means to remember what you are, you know it's there for everyone. 
And so you have perfect assurance for everyone. You realize by you accepting this, you accept it for everyone. You're showing it's there, I can accept it, and it does give remembrance of what I am. And so it reassures everyone, whether they know it or not, the assurance is there. The mantra is what? Inquiry into unconditional love. That is the mantra for the times we live in right now. Not a day too late, not a day too soon, just right now. Inquiry into unconditional love. Find out what unconditional love really is about. And we can we can inquire into it. We can actually do that. I've been doing it. So I, I assure you, it is more than possible, very doable. And again, I can say uh, unconditional love uh, has no data, stores no data. It's not a data storage situation. It has no data on anyone, on anything, on any situation. Zero data. Why? Because it doesn't need to. It knows God, knows what we are already knows from the very beginning. So what purpose could collecting data possibly uh, give for it? Nothing. It's already functioning perfectly. It simply is present in an unmodified, unchanging, perfectly stable condition. One effect overlaying everything. Perfectly present. All places, all times, all circumstances. Forever. Perfectly still perfectly calm, perfectly tranquil. It's already all that. And it knows that this is the perfect reminder of what we are. And it, it doesn't need to know. It doesn't need to know who remembers, when they remember, how long it took to remember. All that is completely irrelevant to it. So it has no, keeps no data on us. None. What a blessing that is. It's such a blessing that we don't even, we can hardly believe it. The inquiry is moving our faith and belief and conceptual clarity to the point where we say, oh, I am going to believe this. And we'll see it, we'll, we'll experience it when we believe it. It's there, but where we place our belief and faith, uh, that's where we'll, our response will be. So we need to inquire, in, inquire into unconditional love. Very simple. Unconditional, what does that mean? It means no conditions, it means you're pre-qualified. You need to meet no requirements to respond to it. That's what it means. Zero conditions are asked of anyone at any time. There is no gate, there is no order, there is no guardhouse, there is nobody going around asking questions, there is no, no requirements, we're pre-qualified to experience. Why? Because we are what we are. We are what we were created to be. And even though we're trying to forget this, we still are what we are, so we are qualified to remember what we are. How can we not be qualified? We already are what we are. We're just in a state of forgetfulness. So of course we're qualified to remember what we are. Everyone is qualified to remember. How can we not be qualified? And so we're all 100% qualified, pre-qualified. And unconditional love knows us. So there are no questions asked of us. All we have to do is trust in this, believe in it, and have faith in it enough to actually experience it. Allow ourselves to experience it. It's there, but we have to allow ourselves to experience it. And that will cool us down for sure. Because then we will just sit the set of that. I'm recording this video direct uh, YouTube up to the show buggy right now after about six minutes. It says, uh, need a method, want to try.
try again or state this happened or what to try again. And so it happens over and over and over. So you cannot, you cannot trust it. So this is the first time I'm trying to record uh, from webcam straight to disk. And hopefully uh, it will work. I mean, it looks a little choppy here, the video at times. Right? Because what we're doing here is we're inquiring into unconditional love. Again, the mantra is inquiry, inquiry into unconditional love. That is the mantra of the times. And it's my blessing to be able to share that uh, with the world and be able to make this statement here as of, uh, what is it today, June, June 28, 2012. The official world mantra is inquiry into unconditional love, inquire into unconditional love, inquire into unconditional love, inquire into it. So if you ask yourself, what should you be doing as you're feeling agitation, as you're following the politics of the world? And the world is nothing but politics, really, is it? Uh, you say, wait a minute, what do I need to be doing? Uh, oh, I need to inquire into unconditional love. Just remind yourself, I need to inquire into unconditional love. And you ask, you ask yourself, unconditional love, well, what is that? What is, what is that, really, yeah? See, that's an inquiry. What does it mean? Unconditional love. It means a love that doesn't put any preconditions on you responding to it and experiencing it. Anyone has equal access. So no conditions. Unconditional means no conditions. Equal access. It means just extrapolate that. The reason it means equal access. In other words, you have perfect access. Your friends do. Your enemies do. Your opponents do. Everyone does. Both now, in the past, and the future. will always have 100% open, equal access. No restrictions. Whatever arise in unconditional love. It has no conditions attached to it whatsoever. None. So, you can't keep anyone out. If they want to experience it, they will. You can't keep your opponents out. But the thing is... When your opponents experience it, they won't be your opponents anymore. Because all they will give that to you that is assurance that, hey, yeah, this really is there. Unconditional love really is there. And it really is unconditional. And at that point, uh, they won't be your opponents anymore. They'll be your best friends. So everybody wins, you see. The whole world can cool down from this political quagmire, financial and political, ideological, conceptual, faith, belief, quagmire that we're in now. We know we're accepted to this vast, enormous block of a dead end. Intuitive people know that we're going into a dead end. It's like a massive wall that all our agitation and desperate efforts to win something, to win perfect forgetfulness of what we are is leading us into, we're being led into this impasse. And as we're feeling that, you know, bouncing off the future here, we're saying, oh my gosh, it's terrible. I feel very tense and agitated. What do you do? You inquire into unconditional love. I remember, oh, I took my dad to see a, a guru, a teacher, that I had somehow described when he was very beginning as Stephen Gray. He's now uh, Adya Shanti. And uh, he had a little, renting a little place over in Saratoga, California. And uh, I remember sitting there, and my dad kind of went, wanted to, maybe I felt that, you know, he would, something would uh, click for him. And, uh, Someone was there, and they were asking questions of, of Stephen Gray. And the question was, what is love? And this lady, would, that's all she was asking, what is love? What is love? You know, and the whole thing was, and it was so 
the whole place was, was laughing, and it was amusing, and it was really an amazing situation. I was so kind of perplexed because she was completely fixated on this question of what is love. And here Stephen was, into, you know, was witnessing to non-dual Advaita uh, awareness of there is no uh, I, however he teaches. And, uh, and here was this insistent, unrelenting, heart fobbing question, what is love? I need to know what love is. And all I heard, you know, what was that about? In just this moment, you know, I realized, I guess I missed it at that time. I missed it. But, but that situation, Grace was really answering my question I had for my dad. The question of and I missed it. I was back like in 19... Uh, more effective, I would say, than Who Am I? Now, Who Am I was introduced by Ramon Maharshi. Self-inquiry, it's called. And that's had a run, a very powerful run through the, through the decades. But I am saying right now, I'm saying that it is even more powerful and helpful to inquire into unconditional love. Say, what is unconditional love? It's a funny thing because I never, ever thought about love at all. My, my focus was different. My focus has always been on clarity. But I'm seeing now, I'm probably the last person you would ever expect would be talking about unconditional love. Because I'm a, an emotional, heartfelt, kind of heart-centered, uh, Person, even though I'm, I'm fairly balanced, I would think I'm not, you know, really just this emotional, uh, loving, hugging ball. I always looked at that and said, no, I'm, I'm a yani, you know, right discrimination, right reason, right logic, right, right belief, right clarity, you know, all those stuff, all that. But now I'm seeing that inquiry into what is unconditional love is the way for right now, and that. Almost 15 years ago, I was sitting in a little, tiny little cubicle that Adyashanti was renting in a little office building after hours on the uh, corner of Prospect and uh, Saratoga Avenue. And uh, we had this profound experience together, all of us, really. And I didn't really realize it at the time. I knew it was profound. So, me, Clarity Ross, my dad, Adyashanti, this lady, and a few other people. There was like just a couple other people there. And then there was this uh, person re recording it all. We actually had a miraculous, incredible breakthrough at the time. Said, it's taken me 15 years to realize it. <laughs> uh, that's really something, really something. What is love? And, you know, the response could be, maybe I can answer it now, you know. It wasn't really quite answered at the time. But maybe that was all part of the play. Maybe it was saying to me, hey, Clarity Rush, you need, this is what you need to answer. You need to inquire into it. 
So, looks like I did get the blessing of the Guru after all. <laughs> it took 15 years to, to realize it. Yeah. But it takes enormous clarity to, to, to inquire into unconditional love without getting sidetracked into uh, faults, uh, avenues, highways and byways, dead ends. Because unconditional love is the answer. Why? Because it reminds us of what we are. It's the perfect reminder of what we are. Why? Because it doesn't change. It doesn't modify. It doesn't go through any sorts of contamination. It's perfectly pure, perfectly still, unchanging, completely certain, just like our choice. We experience this effect. Unconditional love is actually an effect. It's an effect of an idea, the idea of not trying to change what we are, not trying to become prime creator. Our desire to change what we are came from trying to be prime creator. We, our spirit, were the prime created, where the God here created us to be co-creators. And, and we thought, you know what, on a whim, we thought, why don't we try to be prime creator? And then the dream of rose for us. Okay, and then once the dream of forgetfulness for us, we need a dream of remembrance, as it were. We need a, a way to remember what we are. So it's a smooth transition back. Doesn't seem like an abrupt back into direct experiencing. So by responding to unconditional love, the idea of not trying to be prime creator gives rise to a non-modifiable effect, an effect trying to change what it is. If we say we have the idea, let me not change what I am, what's the effect of that idea? Well, it's an unchanging effect, right? It's the effect of unchangeable. Unchangeable can be presented as an effect, and that effect is what we call unconditional love. And by experiencing, responding to unconditional love, we become aware, we become familiar with that which cannot be changed, which is unchangeable, which is not changing, which is not being modified, which is our identity is exactly that as well. It's not being changed. Our change is not being modified. Our identity is experiencing, but it's not being changed by the experiencing. Reality isn't being changed by its expansion. It is expanding, but everything that is remains as it is. And we've forgotten this. So unconditional love is the perfect reminder of what we are. It's the way to remember. It's the way to be reminded, the perfect reminder. It's the only way. All other attempts are inadequate because all our attempts are dealing with effects that change. Our changes cannot remind us of what we are because perfect. And therefore, what we are, the reminder we need has to be a perfect reminder. It cannot be a flawed, unstable reminder because that will actually cause forgetfulness of what we are. So unconditional love is this steady state, completely steady, unmoving. In the East it's called nirvana, unmoving. That which is unmoving, that which simply is present right now. That is what we must experience. We must inquire into that and ultimately respond to it. And I say respond to it because it provides the means to respond to it. It's not responded to by sensory means. So if that lady there in, in, in that satsang with Adyashanti asked you, what is, what is love? You know, first thing I would say, well, it, unconditional love cannot be responded to through the senses at all. It's not something that can be seen or responded to in any way by the senses. So you have to rule that out. You're not going to find it in a person or a place, such a thing or things at all. It's not that you can't be finding it there. So give up the search, meaning give up the sensory search for it. You'll never find it that way. It, it itself provides the means to experience it, to respond to it. Right now we're responding to what's outside of the senses are responding to things and situations. 
places, people, events, all sorts of stuff. So our senses are responding. But as far as unconditional love goes, because it's perfectly stable, it needs a perfectly stable response to it as well. Otherwise, it would be lost in the translation. Our senses are not stable at all, are they? Look at my eyes. My eyes are terrible, getting worse all the time. My hearing is not, you know, I'm sure it's getting worse. My ability to move is getting worse. Everything is aging and getting more and more decrepit. It's all vulnerable, entirely vulnerable. In a moment, something could happen. One of the senses could be messed up. There's no way that one can get the right type of assurance through sensory perception. It's impossible. So unconditional love has to provide the means to respond to it. A non-sensory means. A means that is perfectly stable. Flawless. And I call it perfect vision. I call it vision. Not eyesight. It's not hearing. It's not tasting. Not seeing. Not feeling. Not smelling. It's a vision. Vision of unconditional love. Some call it vision of Christ. Christ is another term for unconditional love. And this vision of unconditional love is stable, unwavering, immaculate, calm, pure, still, tranquil, peaceful, seen, unwavering, non-modifying, unchanging, permanent. And we're responding to it as that. In other words, nothing is lost in the translation to our awareness. Right? So it's an awareness that's being uh, aware of our responses, the response to unconditional love. And it's the awareness that then eventually becomes so familiar with this that it will lose all fear to being aware of the an identity and direct experiencing. So what is our mantra of, of, of today and all days going forward? Inquiry into unconditional love. That's the mantra. And so when we feel stuck, what do we need to say? Oh, I need to inquire into unconditional love. And uh, it's 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 a uh, irony of ironies that I'm actually here uh, pioneering this, giving this mantra and pioneering this because I'm the last person in the world that would would be doing this, and it only took me about 15 years to. To remember, wait a minute, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what the lady was telling me. Inquire into love, inquire into love. That's what she was saying. Love is where it's at, inquire into love. And I'm thinking, no, that, that's some kind of emotional trip, you know, some kind of sentimental trip. That's some kind of sensory trip, you know, that, that, that's not it. And then, <laughs> but the inquiry into it is where it's at. Because the inquiry removes all the false distortions around unconditional love. It's not a physical thing at all. It's not an emotional thing at all. It's not even a heart-centered thing. It's not a heart or head-centered thing. It transcends all of that. It's unconditional. It takes us as it is. All has perfect access to it right now. There's no judgments taking place whatsoever. It's the most profound condition. And sages in the past have, have responded to it. And they say, wow, this is beyond anything that the census could ever provide. And their experience to it also is flawless because unconditional love provides the response to it. Flawless responding ability, response ability is there too. So this is how we skate through the times. This is how we uh, sidestep the times, escape the times, escape the agitation of the times. And as you know, one way or another, your life will be impacted by the agitation of the times, okay? And so keep in mind that the mantra of the times here is inquire into 
unconditional love. Just do that as you're sitting there in the, in the, wherever you are, in a hospital waiting room, in a restaurant, in a doctor's waiting room, in the evening as you're driving, as you're working. Wherever you are, as you're waiting for your oil to be changed. Waiting in line somewhere. Waiting for the commercials to be over. Whatever. Inquire into unconditional love. Tell yourself that. I need to inquire into unconditional love. And just begin that. Begin that process. Let's see what I can do for you here. I come at this situation very fresh, very clean, unaffiliated to me that this is it. This is it. This is how to cool down. Inquire into unconditional love. And this video is in recording. I don't know if the audio is recording or not, to tell you the truth. <laughs> this is the first time recording the disc with this webcam, so I will uh, stop it now and keep fingers crossed that actually record it. And if it does, then I can uh, upload it, and you can watch this, and you can be reassured. Yeah, there is a way through inquiry into unconditional. Here we go. All right, very great. That's it.